uh, I, uh, my family is one of the uh, earliest Falun Gong practitioners family in China. My mom started practicing Falun Gong since 1996. And me, 1997, my mom, my father uh, has never been a Falun Gong practitioner. So uh, at the very beginning of the persecution, my family, especially my mom, who is a local coordinator of those spontaneous events of practicing, uh, she naturally became a target of the local police force. Uh, they put her into custody many times, but severely, the most important three times were in 2001, 2008, and later, late 2000, uh, 2022, early 2022. In 2001, she was put into labor camp far, far away from my family and shocked by electric batons like uh, Cynthia's in the introduction. She's, she was one of the victims of electric batons. She suffered there for constantly two hours and she uh, urinated uh, involuntarily and uh, her health was destroyed terribly. Uh, her heart disease developed after that until until she passed away in the last uh, custody. So, so she she was uh, severely tortured in the first labor camp and uh, almost died there. Right before uh, she almost died, we my family were allowed to take her back home because the the local uh, the the labor camp does not want to carry the responsibility of having someone die in their labor camp. So we brought her back home. Uh, she recovered. And uh, seven years later, in 2008, she was put into labor camp again, three months before this 2008 uh, Beijing Olympic, which is a super big event for the communist regime to put powder on their face. But uh, my mom became one of their costs to look good. So she, again, she, in the in the local detention center, she was tortured, beaten, uh, insulted. Then she was moved to another labor camp, even further from the first one from my home. There, she, her health condition went down directly uh, quickly. Uh, after a few months, she became severely, severely uh, ill. And we were notified that she was about to die there again. So we traveled, we drove like nine to 10 hours, uh, went there and bring her back home. That that was the second case. And there were many, many harassments, uh, police confronting and uh, surveillance, many, many such cases surrounding her. Uh, so since 2003, I left my home uh, to be uh, in a university in a place far, far away from family. So I was not impacted directly by those surveillance harassments, but my, my mom certainly was. And the, the latest case before the few days before the winter of Beijing Olympics, she was arrested again. And quickly she was, uh, her health condition went down. So she was tortured there again because she was protesting by uh, going on a hunger strike. So they beat her, they poured freezing water on her and they uh, left her uh, in a seizure on the concrete floor. So 11 days after she was put into local detention center, she was sent to hospital because she she lost her consciousness. And uh, the, the maltreatment did not stop. She had uh, uh, iron feathers on her ankles, and uh, she, there was a rubber nose, rubber tube in her nose, and uh, her hand were ha uh, she was handcuffed onto the the iron bed in the hospital. Uh, the first few days she was in hospital, she came around uh, a few times a day, but soon we did not know what happened later because uh, on March twenty one, uh, March twentieth. She, the, the police notified my father that uh, my mom was about to die. Then my father went to the hospital, tried to bring her home. And the police said, no, you can't because um, uh, our leader has not approved this yet. Then the next day, they told my father that she passed away. And uh, they sent 
about 50 policemen guarding her body and monitoring her apartment because they do not want this message to be sent out, though if, uh, quickly we know what was happening. So they, then they used uh, they used uh, my cousin, who is a, a close nephew of my father, used her job in the government to threaten to threat my father to give permission to cremate my mom's body. So that happened. My mom was uh, cremated uh, seven days after that. So my mom is a very typical victim in the persecution. In her last 23 years since the persecution, she was in custody many times. She was harassed so many times, facing surveillance, confronted by police, and she was constantly in the last 23 years, she had be, to be extremely careful about what she says on the phone, where she goes, and she cannot carry cell phone because she was, that, that will bring her in trouble since the police was monitoring her cell phone. So in the last 23 years, she was in super high pressure and that impacted uh, my father and her relationship because my father's attitude was, why do you be, why are you so stubborn about truth and his compassion for bearings? And my mom's response was basically, you said it, truth and his compassion for bearings, that's something we should be stubborn to. And uh, yeah, that's basically the story. And uh, her case was so recent, it happened just in March. So it, uh, that's a very good example that such a horrible crime, uh, the persecution is still going on vividly in China, even being covered by covered up by uh, or surrounded by so many other news in China. That's something that is truly happening and they, they don't want anyone else in the world to know about that. Yeah, that's basically the story. Thanks. Thank you, Simon, and, and thank you for uh, for sharing that. I, I know that's not that's not an easy thing to do.